it's another episode of Ladies Digest um, where issues in the world of women are discussed. And as usual, I'm your host, Joan Equia Iyoha. And this show is probably brought to you by the Association of African Universities, AAU TV. Um, today, we are looking at a very trending topic, which is navigating pregnancy during a um, pandemic and during this COVID-19. After this time out, we'll get to meet our guests. Remember, you can join the conversation on our social media handles, on Facebook and YouTube, Association of African Universities, on our Twitter handle, AAUTV underscore African Universities, and our Instagram page, Ladies Digest. Many thanks to GTP Fabrics for this colorful fabric and Majestic Sims for making a meaning out of it. Do stay tuned. Ruth Sally Kodam is a midwife. She's married with kids and she loves reading. She is very passionate about maternal and child health and advocates for same. She runs an NGO known as Wachag Ghana. She also oversees a virtual midwifery class for pregnant and nursing mothers. Welcome back. It is the pride of every woman to introduce and welcome a new baby into the family. And in the wake of this outbreak, um, the focus of the discussions have been moved or towards um, world economies and the populace and the lens has, is not really focusing on pregnancy or pregnant women. So we want to, we have in our midst, in our studio, a very special guest, a very special midwife who would help us talk about pregnancy in this period of COVID-19 and see how if the, the outbreak how the outbreak will change the pattern of pregnancy in terms of antenatal, postnatal, and the pregnancy journey in general. Welcome to our studio midwife, Sally. Thank you. You've been here before. Yeah. yeah so you are not a new face in yeah, yeah Ladies Digest. Welcome Thank back. You. Thank How you. has it been? Oh, it has been good. Yeah. I always see you busy. <laughs> your yes, yes, NGO. Yes. You're really doing a lot. Yeah. Thumbs up to you. Yeah. So we are looking at. Everybody knows of um, COVID-19, and yes. as I am um, doing my introduction, we are not really focusing on pregnant women. But we know that they are there, and we mm -hmm. know that pregnant women in general, they are quite, that, in that condition, they are quite susceptible to diverse um, ailments and illness. This um, COVID-19, is, is there, are they prone to it more, or there is an exception. Are they prone to COVID-19 getting it, contracting it, or it's normal for them? Thank you yeah. for inviting me. Yeah. Okay, so I, COVID-19 actually started in Wuhan, and yes. we all know it. Yeah. So yeah. if you w actually want to trace it back, then we'd have to go to, let's say, Wuhan, or the studies or stories that have come from yeah. Wuhan. Wuhan yeah. So they have done some few studies, and they have realized that either pregnant women or the general population are at the same risk. Okay. Yes, so we would say that um, pregnant women are already susceptible. Their immune system goes a little lower mm. when they, you get pregnant. Yeah. So, so when it comes to COVID-19, the general population and pregnant women yeah. are all at risk. There's okay. no exception that, okay. okay, because I'm pregnant, my risk is a bit lower, lower than someone who is not pregnant. Okay. Everybody would have to take caution, the universal precaution that has been um, approved yeah. by the WHO. We all have to stick to it, whether okay. you are pregnant, pregnant or not. Or so not. pregnant women are sub uh, equally susceptible to COVID-19. COVID. Okay, so it's yes. not like they are more susceptible because what of make, their... Yeah, what will make them more is for the fact that in general, you already have a lower immune system, system. once you get pregnant. Yeah, 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 it yeah. Goes okay, down yeah. So that yes. alone can put yes. them more at risk. Yes. Okay, 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 that's true. Um, we, we've heard that it's advised not to, if we are really not, if we are not in a critical condition in terms of health, there is no need going to the hospital because we know there, there may be patients there and you might end up contracting it and bringing it home. When and we know that pregnant women go for their regular checkups, which is the antenatal. Yeah. So, is it still advisable for them to go to the hospitals for their regular antenatal checkups? Or what are doctors doing about working on to help them 
reduce the visit, the regular visits to the hospitals. Okay. Thank you so much. So there have been guidelines that have been given for pregnant women who okay. are actually people who are pregnant in this season. We know yeah. that it's really a hard time. Yeah. But we, if we manage it, the situation well, we can actually have healthy babies sure. and um, safe delivery. What I actually advise is that, or what is generally accepted is that pregnant women, let's say sometimes you go to the hospital and then today you are supposed to do your labs, Tomorrow come for scan, okay. and then yeah. the next day come and see the doctor. So like three days. So yeah, you so you would be going up and down. Yeah. So we are actually putting activities together. So if I'm going to the hospital today, I expect that if I have to do a lab, I should do it. A scan, I should do it. If I have to see a doctor, the time has to be managed effectively okay. so okay. that the the pregnant woman does not visit Visits the hospital, the hospital too, too frequently. Okay. 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 In other advanced um, countries or hospitals. Yeah. They, have, they are using telemedicine. Okay. Yes, so telemedicine, meaning that if it is just, um, let's say, I'm just having headache. Okay. Headache could be serious, yes. depending on how it is. Yeah, sure. But you could call your doctor or you could have a telephone interview yeah. with the doctor to know whether it's something that you should come to the hospital or sometimes just something, he would say, okay, rest, take some fluids or something. Okay, okay. So it means that it is actually limiting the amount, the amount. of visits yeah, you, are, sure, sure, sure. you are taking to the hospital. So all these are measures that have been put in place to make sure that the pregnant woman is safe. But what is actually happening is that I think some of our pregnant women are also taking it to the extreme. Okay. Yes. Just like yesterday, I saw a case. She, because of the COVID-19, the, the panic is actually keeping them at that home. So they have complications and they are scared that yeah. they'll come to the hospital and then they may contract the virus or something. Mm. But it is not that way. So they are even staying at home against, without their doctor's um, permission? Yes, yeah, some are actually doing that. Mm. You know, people are pregnant and when you get pregnant, you need to start antenatal, especially within the first few weeks. Okay. Which people are delaying it. Mm. Think, um, scared that they are having the hope that the virus would, would go, go down, down before. before they start. But if you have not done a scan to even know whether the baby is actually at the right position wow. or not, it's actually giving you a greater risk. That because there is a possibility that your pregnancy test has started positive, but mm. there's even no baby, baby or there's the baby, you are having a, fa um, a baby in the tube, mm. like ectopic gestation. Ectopic, okay. So it's actually posing a Greater little risk. more risk. Mm. So as much as we are saying that we should reduce our frequencies to the hospital, it should be done in collaboration with your healthcare provider. Okay. Meaning that if you are having complications, the hospital have taken measures to make sure that pregnant women who come to the facilities are safe. Okay. Yes. Okay. This social distancing, using face mask, okay. um, the use of hand yes, sanitizers. sanitizers. Yes, the hospitals yeah. are all cautious about that. So we are making sure that the hospitals are safe. Yes, so please don't stay <laughs> at home if you are pregnant. Yeah. Because yeah. the complications can actually kill you faster than wow. COVID-19. Yeah. Yes, we, yeah. are, we generally know that a lot of research has been conducted. Yeah. In Wuhan, they actually had about nine women who were in their third Trimest. trimester. Wow. And then um, they, yes, they had mild symptoms. They, they gave birth to their babies. Babies were doing well and all that so as much as we know that COVID-19 is actually scary it is not that extreme yeah because yeah. if you stay at home as a pregnant woman and you have diabetes you have hypertension sickle cell yeah, you are yeah. actually putting yourself at, at a greater, greater risk, risk even yeah. more than the COVID-19 and we know we already have huge numbers of maternal mortality yeah. in our country so yeah. this can actually complicate increase. it and increase it because yeah. women are actually care to visit our facilities. Mm -hmm. um, still on the lane of um, her visiting hospital on that same um, lane, um, still some people, some women may prefer or start deciding on giving birth at home. Do you advise? At if some, maybe they've done the antenatal and everything is okay, but they'll say, me, I'll just want to give birth at home still for this COVID-19 thing. Yes, I think this concern has been raised. I have a lot okay. of women also calling, mm. can, you can you have a delivery at home and all that? I think that um, 
for delivery to be conducted at home, yeah. certain basic things Have should be there. there. The okay. midwife you are calling to have to deliver you at home should be competent enough, enough. should have done uh, have uh, some experience about home births where she's prepared for emergencies. Yeah. There should be like an emergency plan. plan if plan you are B. delivering at home, anything could happen. Okay. Are you close to the, have you planned with the, maybe the nearest hospital that if there's anything they, ca they could actually send you there? Yeah. And then, so the emergency part of it, that is what makes it a bit, a bit, yeah, a bit dicey, scary yeah. and, and dicey. Because if I'm delivering at a place where it will take me two hours before through traffic to, before yeah. I get to the next facility. Or even the next facility does not know that I'm delivering at home and yeah, if I have a complication, yeah. they can send me there. Yes. Then so it, it's not just about planning a home delivery. I mean it's everybody's wish to deliver in the comfort yeah, of your home. Yeah, but you home. have to look at the situation yeah. that surrounds you. Yeah, whether yeah. it's actually okay. And then it is not everybody who can even deliver at home. Yeah, Let's say yeah, you are yeah. diabetic, you are hypertensive, you have sickle cell, you have certain conditions that um, can, can actually, you can even get mortality or anything yeah, at home or at home, yeah. severe complications. So there's no need to risk. People who have, let's say, delivered two or two, one, one or two times yeah. and they don't have complications, okay. everything is okay, they have actually contacted a midwife or a facility that can plan the home delivery so well. Okay. I don't know. Right now, I don't know whether there's a private hospital that is doing that. Oh, okay. I don't know. No, okay, but, but then, let's say if there's a hospital, hospital that has taken it up, that, okay, we can conduct home delivery. For you. We yeah. are setting things up. When I, I said, okay, Joanne, I'm going to do your delivery. I know that I'm coming with a competent midwife. I know that I have set up my hospital in case in of case. an emergency sure. and I have things that in case you are bleeding at home you I can, can do something as yeah, soon as possible yeah, so yeah. all those things those little things are very important because the things that are killing our women are not things that are really big they are very it's small tiny yes very that, tiny things that we yes. overlook we and overlook. if we are not careful yes. it. Yeah, yeah. so I advise that um, for me looking at our situation here unless it is really it is everything is really Very planned, sick, but yeah. if not, it is still better Advisable. to deliver in the hospital. hospital yeah. Yes, you have a um, virtual, a, I think, a WhatsApp platform where you do this regular updates for yes. women. Can you tell us about a bit about it? Okay, so it's actually like a virtual class. Yeah. We actually use WhatsApp most often, but okay. soon we'll be using Zoom as well. Oh, okay, and but you have yes. a blog too. Yes. Okay. So what happens is that we have the pregnant women there. Sometimes you go to the hospital, you are going to see your doctor the next one month. Okay, okay. And so between that one month, that time, like there's a weeks. vacuum. Yeah, what sure. happens to you? Who sure. listens to you? So we put, we have all these women there. We have dedicated midwives there. Wow, okay. So we take them weekly. And also you cannot, they interact with each other, support yeah. each other, and also share ideas. So it's actually a way of preparing the woman for the pregnancy delivery okay. and they are able to recognize danger signs even better than somebody who would just go for the regular antenatal yeah, yeah, and after yeah, that yeah, yeah. for some people they don't even have contacts of their midwives and doctors so okay. within that period yeah. you are always being seen like yeah. Yeah, yeah. You they always have expect yeah, sure. advice. And I think you you at least I follow you send some yes, tips to yes. me. I follow it. I think it's better in a way, not better, okay, it's, it's good because mm. these are things that it's written. You can always refer to them. Yes, go back. Unlike what your doctor tells you and it, not everything can stick in yes, the yes. head. But this one, when you feel you're having some signs, you can refer to. So it's, it's really a very good initiative. Thank you. You are really doing well for our pregnant women and Thank our nursing you. mothers. We'll go for a quick break and we'll be back. Okay. Stay tuned for tips in one. 
Welcome to Tips in One. Coronavirus is an illness caused by a virus that is spreading rapidly across the world. As the world puts a united front for the battle against the new virus, it has given rise to a series of complications, especially for those planning to welcome a newborn in their households. Since there is not enough data to understand the impact of COVID-19 on pregnant women, it is a nerve-wracking time for expectant mothers and families. As of now, no reports are confirming the fact that it can be transmitted from a mother to a baby. As per the World Health Organization, an active virus has not been found in the samples of amniotic fluid and breast milk. Contact your nearest antenatal or general hospital when you experience any symptom of the virus. You can talk to midwife Sally on plus 233-24-228-1957 or visit her blog post at midwifesally.com. This has been Tips in One. Enjoy the show. Thanks for joining me for those tips. In case you're just joining us, this is still Ladies Digest. And as I said earlier on, you can drop your comments and your questions on our social media handles on Facebook and YouTube, Association of African Universities, and our Twitter handle, AUTV underscore African Universities, and Ladies Digest on our Instagram page. We still have in our midst um, midwife Sally. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, so we are still talking about pregnancy. Um, yes. How should um, a pregnant woman stay safe in, during this pandemic? Okay. There are several things that a pregnant woman can actually do to okay. stay safe. I think we have talked about some one yeah, in a way. Yeah, you know. So pregnant women should make sure that they go for the appointment. Okay. Yes. Sometimes you may feel that you are well. I know women who come and then um, they just come for regular antenatal clinic and we realize that the person has high BP or anemia or something. So the fact that you are feeling so well, well doesn't mean yeah, that all yeah, is well. well. You should wait till the pandemic is over. Please visit the hospital to be checked. And also you should actually avoid um, overcrowded places. Okay. Yes. Pregnant women should avoid sick people as well. Okay. So if someone is sick, you don't know what yeah, ailment, type of yeah, sick. Yes. Yeah. And also take a lot of fruits. Fruits. Yes, okay. especially the ones that has vitamin C in them, okay. like oranges, pineapple. A lot of, there's a lot yeah. of misconception yeah. about pineapple, but ah, you can take some okay. pineapple. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay, but Just it's in not moderation. in moderation. Yes, you can take oh, it in okay. moderation. Oh, okay. Yes, so pregnant women should also take enough rest and also water, observe... Yes, a lot of water. Observe the same thing that the general population is actually observing. Pregnancy does not immune you to COVID-19. Sure. The sure, risk sure. is actually almost the same. And yours is even a bit lower, lower. because you already have a yeah, lowered low immune, immune system. system. So yeah. you should actually frequent hand washing, avoid touching your eyes and your mouth. Um, what yeah, else? Yeah, even though, <laughs> even though that... Yeah, the same general... Touching. Even though it's quite, I it's it's reflex, but we just have to try and do it. I mean, touching your eyes and your mouth because you know it's reflex action. Yes, yes, you that's know, true. Your hand just goes there, it goes to your butt. So if you are washing your hands frequently, yeah. the yeah, tendency of doing safe. that yeah. it makes it safer. It makes yeah, it a bit yeah. safer. And they also say you, if anything, you should use the hand you don't use often. Then okay. you can use to touch that's those things. Yeah, yeah, so maybe if you use your right often, you can use your left to touch. You know you wouldn't put it in your mm. eyes and all that. Yes. Okay, still talking about safety. It's, uh, we Africans, we've, we've created or we've, we see on social media where they share things, um, home remedy. Not, okay, not really home remedy, but how to build your immune system locally where you add some spices lime in hot water and do the steaming is it advi it's not scientifically scientifically proven but is it um what was it advisable for pregnant women to even think of going through that because of the heat and all i think um, you can take instead of doing that, that you can actually take warm okay. warm beverages okay or things that are warm because yeah. it would actually do the same, same in a way, thing, which yeah. makes it a bit safer. Safer, like okay. so warm drinks, warm beverages, okay, um, a lot of water, fluids, and all that. It would all amount to that. Okay, and then you should continue taking your pregnancy medication. Yeah, they may add some vitamin C, which would also help to boost your sure, sure. immunity. See, okay. Yeah, so I can't 
say yeah, you should do that, that because thing. sometimes they have certain things that may not be good for, for pregnant women. Yeah. But once if your doctor recommends certain it's things, okay. then you can do that. Yeah, but yeah. And being that um, every lady or every human being is unique in its own way, yes, what yes. may be good for me may not be good for another person. Exactly. So that's true, that's true. So let's come down to um, um, after pregnancy, like a woman has given birth. We know it's quite common in Africa where when um, a lady gives birth, family members, well wishes, they, they wish them well, they come around, they want to carry the baby, touch the baby and all that. How in this period, we know it's a very sensitive period, we are not in normal times, yeah. how should this case be handled that I won't feel offended, for instance, I come to visit you and I want to carry, um, hold your baby. How would you talk to the person or address the person that I won't feel offended, that, hey, you don't want me to carry your baby or something like that? Okay, so let me use my own example. Okay. So I visited my friend who has given birth okay. recently. And we all know that um, everybody's trying to limit, you should limit visitors yeah, at this sure, time. Sure. Because we are actually working about using chocho and all that, and we are really exposed. Yeah. And babies easily pick sure. certain things. So I think at this time, everybody should understand that if somebody is has given birth, yes. you cannot just visit like you used to do Before, and then just go yeah. and hold the baby and all that. So I went to the house. I think um, we maintained social distancing. Okay. She brought the baby. Okay, we talked for about one hour. She's my friend, so okay. 30 minutes, one hour. Okay. She, she wanted me to see the baby. I was like, I wanted to see the baby. Okay. So she brought the baby. I, could, I didn't go near okay. them, you but I just saw that she was go. holding the yeah. baby. It was at a distance, distance. and that was all. She sent the baby back to wow. the room. So it was just like a one minute. Wow. Yes, just seeing the baby, but not necessarily going to, to touch, touch the baby. The baby. It's unacceptable. So when and we, I think we should all okay. understand. So when we have, and let's say an old woman, so an old woman who wants to carry the baby and hold the baby by all means, how should I talk to that woman? I think that um, before someone should come to your home at this time, mm. it has to be some extent very close. planned okay. or even if not planned before the person gets into the room where you are keeping the baby there should be some form of communication true, though, yeah. like yeah. once we are even entering yeah, you can talking with you that oh you're in a like can i speak to you you're in a burning thing you know be a shame who you and see a baby no cry and person will be a yari be anti obi emma will be unfunny and sankan i think that it's so simple okay People yeah, should understand. understand. Yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, we're almost rounding up. Um, the still on the um, nursing mothers. For instance, a nursing mother has been tested positive of the COVID nineteen, and we know how important breastfeeding is for a baby, especially with the first three months. I think the exclusive breastfeeding. How is it possible or is it advisable for the woman to still continue breastfeeding the baby is, or is there a possibility that the baby can contract the COVID-19 via breastfeeding? Okay. Has there been any proven okay. thing about Thank you. Um, so for the first research that I saw, yeah. they said that breastfed mothers, okay. babies, breast milk they tested okay. breast milk and they didn't find the okay. virus in, in it, it. so the who has even recommended that okay. people who have covid 19 can breastfeed their babies okay. just that they have to actually know that the baby can still get it through the mother's sure. breath and sure. contact okay. and all that yeah. so yeah. if you're a mother and you have covid 19 you've been diagnosed with covid 19 you still have to breastfeed your baby you still have to wear your mask, your mask and protect yourself oh, so that you don't transfer it yeah. to the baby the baby so that's the technical Thing part about, about it, it. Okay. so you can actually breastfeed, breastfeed but you should actually observe all the protocols that are laid down yeah. and if the mother is very sick then i'm sure that they are going to yeah, separate yeah, the baby and yeah, also yeah. look for alternatives of feeding yeah, yeah. the baby it needs. could also depend on the protocol of um, that particular country okay. or the hospital Okay. Because I think the WHO is a standard they've given yes, to everybody, yes, but yeah. 
hospitals, counties would also oh, yeah. develop their own guidelines oh, okay, oh, to, okay. so suit you should, to suit yes. themselves. So and you even should the do. mother's preference can also it's come true. into place. It's true. But if, if, you feel if I say, okay, I'm so scared, oh, I've been diagnosed, I don't want my baby to be exposed, yeah. I, don't want, I don't know why she's going to be forced to do that. So it's all, all that comes into yeah, play. But you can breastfeed your baby. Baby, it's, it's allowed mm. to breastfeed your baby, okay. So any final words for our viewers? Okay, so it's actually a difficult time for yeah. all pregnant women, but I actually want everyone to remember that though COVID-19 is a bit scary, maternal death uh, has killed more women in Ghana and in Africa than COVID-19 has sure, done. Sure. So we still need to really take good care of ourselves, go for your appointment, take your medicine, and also make sure that you're always learning. Yeah. When you're pregnant, you are the one pregnant, not the midwife, not the doctor. So take responsibility for all the decisions that you make. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow, thank you, midwife, for, for honoring our invitation oh. and coming oh. even at a very short notice. <laughs> we really appreciate it. And we hope next time when we invite you, sure. you would always be around. Um, this has been Ladies Digest. As midwife said, you are responsible for your pregnancy, so you should take responsibility and do the necessary things you need to do for the sake of your baby and you yourself to reduce maternal mortality. And this has been Ladies Digest. As I said, many thanks to my technical team, my producer and my cameraman, my sound engineer. Many thanks to them. Stay safe this period. This period, as we all know, we are not in normal times. Adhere to the very, very necessary precautionary measures um, suggested, recommended by the World Health Organization. And do stay safe till we come your way next time. I'm Joni Kriya. You are bye.